Hello everyone and welcome to episode 285 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we have the full crew here this week. Starting with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. What's up today, Richard? Hey Seth. Uh, lots of news this morning. We'll just leave it at news. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, we, we have plenty to talk about today, but we'll get to that in a minute. Before we do, we have another co-hosting, Krim. How are you today, Krim? I'm pretty excited as a format that I love got a good amount of uh things happening to it. Yeah, so we've kind of been hinting around this a little bit. Today's big news and the biggest topic of our podcast, really our our, our main topic, only topic maybe, is uh, the BNR announcement. So we got a massive BNR list update today, just uh, a couple hours ago. So we're going to spend some time breaking down what was banned, what wasn't banned, what it means for various formats. Might talk a little bit about Power Creep and Standard uh, based on an old post that was going around earlier this week and also answering your fish mail, of course. So so that is the plan for today. But before we get into the BNR announcement, have you ever uh, tried to sell your magic cards, Richard? Yes. Have, have you ever gone through the experiment of uh, having to sort them and uh, type them all into a buy list and then ship them? Is it is it fun? Is it an enjoyable experience? No, it's it's as fun as playing <laughs> Pioneer. Oh, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> well, <Hey>. if, uh, <laughs> if you would like to have more fun than playing Pioneer and sell your magic cards, our show today is brought to you by Card Conduit, and they are the easiest way to sell magic cards if you want to avoid all those hassles we were talking about, the time, the sorting, the shipping, you could just uh, send your cards over to Card Conduit, a new service from the folks at Card Hoarder, and they will sort, grade, and sell your magic cards. And once your shipment's processed, you'll receive the proceeds minus their fee. And right now, you can get a 10% discount by going over to cardconduit.com slash goldfish. So thank you to Card Conduit for supporting the show. And uh, let's talk some BNR. Richard, let's start off with what was banned, and then we'll get into what that actually means. So give us an overview of today's huge BNR announcement. All right. I'm just going to talk about all of the bannings and unbannings, and then we can do- uh, delve into each format specifically. So first off, historic. Agent of Treachery, Winota, Joiner Forces, Fires of Invention, banned. So previously suspended, they have been confirmed, degenerate, moved to banned. Nexus of Fate, banned. Burning Tree Emissary is suspended. Uh, so basically, those two cards, Nexus and Emissary, gone from the format. Pioneer, Oath of Nyssa, unbanned. Modern, Arkham's Astrolabe, banned. Popper, Expedition Map, and Mystic Sanctuary, banned. Period. That is it. <laughs> Well, uh, let's let let's start with uh, let's start with the easy one uh, because we got a lot to break down here. Let's start with historic, uh, the newest format on the list. Uh, so, Age of Treachery, Winona, Fires of Invention, they have already been suspended in the format. I, for me at least, it's not a surprise to see them moved uh, to the full ban list, meaning they're probably unlikely to come back. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Are you down with those cards basically being gone forever, presumably? I mean, cheating mana. Uh, and finding ways to cheat things into play. Anything like that being gone from the format is good, right? I, so I, I'm happy about that. And now they got permanently, like, got, act, like, axed from the format. So, so moving from suspended to banned is great because now for those that built those decks can get, get their, like, wild cards back. So yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. To me, suspended is like 99.9% banned. Like, I, I'm not sure what has to happen for something to like unsuspend itself. Like, how can they determine this card is safe when no one has played it? Like, the metagame must like really take a nosedive for them to be like, oh no, we need Fires of Invention back, right? <laughs> so, to me, when I see suspended, it's pretty much banned. So, this is, you know, pretty much confirming that. So, now you get your wild cards on Arena, I guess. I think uh, the one exception we've seen was Field of the Dead, which was, like, suspended and then unsuspended. I'm pretty sure that's the only one that's happened with. But, yeah, I kind of view it the same way. Like, once Winota's suspended, 
in my mind, it's basically the same as being banned, because you know there's no way they're letting that or Fires of Invention back in the format. So uh, I, I fight with all that. The more interesting part, though, is the actual changes. Uh, Krim, you have to be at least a little happy today that Nexus of Fate was on the list. I know actually yes. both of us <laughs> have been talking about getting Nexus out of Historic for a long time, and uh, Wizards finally did it. Also, Burning Tree Emissary, which is maybe a little bit more of a surprise. So what do you think about these big changes, Krim? I am so happy happy i mean i still think they miss the mark in that they didn't get wilderness reclamation on this list but uh nexus of fate oh my gosh thank you so much because that that card single-handedly made playing best of three miserable like i just like i never wanted to play best of three right i only (laughs) wanted to play best of one because i never had to run into that card uh and like especially when your next big tournament is going to be historic You know, nobody wants to see just, like, the same pattern of, like, oh, here we go, QQ, hit the button, float all my mana, take the next turn, take the turn after that, and just, like, how efficient this deck got, right? Like, I mean, you you used to be able to go, like, underneath it, right? You try to go hyper aggro, but then it just got even more tuned. It dropped the fogs, and then it just became this thing where it didn't even care to interact with you. It just needed to go so, like, ramp as fast as it could and just take every turn from there on out. And it was just a, a, like a kind of a miserable play pattern to watch over and over and over and see get played. Even people that play Nexus asked for it to get banned. Yeah, that's that's usually a, a pretty good sign that a card or a strategy is overpowered is when the players of that deck are like, yeah, I mean, I do play it, but this really should not be part of the format. So I'm definitely thrilled about Nexus being gone. Nexus was definitely my least favorite deck to run into, like playing the ladder or whatever at Historic. And like you said, it's gotten even better since it left Standard. There's now Uro to grow along with Ghost, uh, Growth Spiral. So you have this turbo ramp strategy that is just really effective. The play pattern is horrible. It's just, uh, it's a huge relief to have Nexus out of the format. The one that surprised me more, for sure, was Burning Tree Emissary. So there have been like rumblings about it. To put the con, uh, to put this in context, heading into the BNR, I think most Historic players agreed that Nexus and Gruul were like the two top decks in the format, at least in best of three. And Burning Tree is a key piece of the Gruul deck. I was kind of doubtful that it would actually be banned because my experience playing against Gruul has been that yeah, sometimes they play, like, two Burning Tree Emissaries into another two-drop on turn two, and you just, like, insta-lose, but the deck felt pretty beatable to me if you're playing, like, removal and you're playing sweepers. It's just kind of, like, efficient mid-range stuff with questing bees and spell breakers. not the type of archetype that you normally associate with Mannings. What do you guys think of, uh, of Birdie Tree leaving the format? This kind of made sense, right? Like, I mean, I, I kind of felt like this could have happened. I wasn't sure, like, because, I mean, I guess I was so blinded by my hate for Nexus, but, uh, like, for <laughs> me, like, I, I I think that this makes sense because the, like, 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 you would think that, or at least in my experience, just playing a bunch of removal is good enough, right? But it's like, like, it's not like we have Bile Blight, and, like, Legion's End is not Bile Blight, right? So, like, it felt kind of bad, just like, like, even if you had a removal spell, it just wasn't enough. And, it, and like, if you didn't have Cry of the Carnarium on three, you were most likely dead, right? And, and, and I don't know, it just felt like it was kind of like, well, cheating a little bit on mana again, right? Just, you got a free spell. Free spells have always been a little bit of a problem, right? And now, this free spell comes with a 2-2. And if you ever chain off, like, like you had mentioned, which is more often than not, like, it, it's pretty common, right? I, I would see, like, burning tree, burning tree, and, like, I don't know, robber of riches or anything, something along those lines. And just, like, one for wanting that just isn't great. And on the draw, like, you know what I mean? Like, if it's, if you're on the draw and, like, your opponent goes on the play with burning tree, burning tree into something, it's like, well, I still gotta sit here and wait another turn, like, before I can even use Cry of the Carnarium. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's the yeah. variance that that's getting this deck because you can get the nut draw, right? You can get four Burning Tree Emissaries and the game is pretty much over. And then that little pop-up comes up and asks, like, did you enjoy this <laughs> game of magic? And like, happy you are face. 100%, you know, if you're the gruel player, happy face. The other player is like, no, I literally did nothing and I died because this guy got like the luck draw on me, right? So I, I think that has to do with it like maybe the deck is fine like overall but just the extreme variance and the fact that you feel helpless like sometimes uh yeah so i i i'm guessing it's that like the the feel bad moments of someone just going off on you and you have one land in play like okay yes (laughs) 
<laughs> it is ah. <laughs> it is a little bit tilting, I will say. Like, when you do play against the deck and they do have that draw and they play the first one, you're like, no, they can't have a second one. Like, what's let me put my hypergeometry calculator. <laughs> what are the odds that they have two? And they always have the second one. And yeah. then they have, like, a hasty follow-up, like, Robert the Rich. You're like, oh, my goodness. So I, I don't mind it being banned. It wasn't really on my radar. It'll be interesting to see what this means to uh, uh, Historic moving forward. Not only do we have presumably the two top decks banned. It's always a little tricky with Historic because we haven't had many tournaments yet, although that's changing, but I would say that Nexus and Gruel were the two best decks in the format, so not only are the two best decks going to be worse, Nexus is just gone. At Gruel, I think you can still play, but it's much less threatening without Burning Tree. We also get Jumpstart this week, so I think that might be part of why we're seeing these big changes now, is Wizards wanting to make sure the format is in a fun, diverse place as all these new cards, and hopefully a bunch of new players pick up this format thanks to your new Jumpstart cards. Yeah. I mean, we've got the historic, like, what is it, the Arena Open coming up? Then we've got the historic, like, I don't know, Players Tour or something also coming up along with it, so lots of big events, and it is nice to see this, this much of a shakeup right before the big tournament, right? I mean, I, I, I'm also really glad, because, like, I can't imagine just watching that. Like, oh boy... And here comes player X. Oh, they drew Nexus. They're going to repeat their loop. <laughs> oh, burning tree, burning tree, burning tree. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> the person died. I, it'll definitely make uh, those events much more exciting. That's for sure. The other thing I want to mention quickly on Historic is I've seen some people say, wait, wasn't burning tree part of Historic Anthology? <laughs> Isn't this a card that Wizards put into the format intentionally? And that is true, although... For me, that's not a problem. I would rather, with stuff like Historic Anthologies, have Wizards, uh, with Historic in specific, since it's a digital-only format, take some risks, put the Burning Tree Emissary type cards into the format, and then suspend them or ban them as necessary, rather than just put really watered-down cards that don't really impact the format in Historic Anthology. So yes, it is true that Wizards put Burning Tree into the format uh, specifically with Historic Anthologies, but I think that's fine. Like, uh, are you guys okay with that? like pushing the boundaries a little bit knowing that maybe the card will have to be suspended later yeah i mean as as you had mentioned it is the digital format right if it's the digital format that they have that's exclusively digital like why not this it, it I, I think it's perfect this is where you get to really test the waters and like put some cards in and you know like if it just doesn't work out take it out yeah i, I feel like they should refund you your like some gems if you bought the gem pack but other than that like it's digital. This is expected to happen. So I, I, I agree with Seth where I'd rather them do this than not do it and just leave it in the format, like kind of what they do with their face mythic cards in standard. Like, oh, yeah, you know, it's kind of important. We'll just leave it there even though it's not good. Like, yeah, just ban it. Give people back wild cards. Maybe refund some gems if they spent gems on it. And then call it a day, move on. Yeah. I think uh, I think that's a good way of handling it. And that's one of the things I like about Historic, is you can make those quick changes. But uh, we have other four. Oh. oh, go ahead, Grim. Well, yeah, like, I mean, I, I, don't, I, like, I think this is only part of it. Like, believe it or not, I still think that, as I had mentioned earlier, I still think Field of the Dead should be on this list, and I still think Wilderness Reclamation should be on this list. I, I don't know, like, am I am I being ridiculous for, for wanting that? I mean, like, Wilderness Reclamation is another four-mana... Uh, like, you know, like, dub mana doubler, a way to cheat on spells, right? Like, like, cheap on, like, you know, like, it just doesn't feel good playing I, against Wilderness Reclamation You're probably either. right, but given Jumpstart is around the corner, I'd rather them wait to see what the meta looks like and then hit it again with another round of bannings. But, but do you need to wait another round to see if, like, hey, turns out people getting to double their mana is, is pretty good still? I'm actually, like... <sighs> I'm actually kind of okay with banning Nexus and leaving Wilderness Rack with the the knowledge being that maybe you have to ban it in the future. Like, is Wilderness Rack going to be playable or good in the format without access to Nexus? Like, do you, you think? I mean, you can it will still eventually play break, Expansion right? Explosion. Yeah, and yeah, like and like the farther down the line we go, yeah, like easily, right? You could just definitely do more things. I mean, just being able to like play and then like. And then just untap, float all the mana, go discontinuity, who knows, right? Like, something down the line could make that even worse. That's that's true. Like, I I think that Wilderness Wreck 
probably I, I would be fine with that being banned and i think it probably will be eventually but i'm also fine with taking nexus for now waiting to see what happens with jumpstar and then and then dealing with that in the future if and when which it, it probably will happen but when the need arises i don't i think my guess would be because of nexus getting banned people will just like kind of move away from that archetype hopefully for the time being and like play different new stuff uh, so maybe it won't be very heavily played right now and then if it gets to the point where it's heavily played again then just get rid of it because i do agree that willer's reclamation is a pretty uh a pretty miserable card and it doesn't really ever do fair fun <laughs> play patterns or good things to a format yeah like and, and like that's why like because i could see that there's a chance where people just move straight to like from nexus the nexus players then just go and build like like reclamation right like team of reclamation and just expansion explosion you i wonder yeah it'll be interesting i i'm actually not sure with all the new cards entering the format like we haven't seen Wilderness Rack really dominate in a format like Modern or Pioneered for the most part. So I'd be curious to see with like 500 new Jumpstart cards, is Historic getting to the point where it's big enough that, you know, Wilderness Reclamation is another card for certain archetypes? Or is it still going to be like one of the best, most miserable things going on in the format? I think uh, I will be interested to see how that shakes out. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, like, I, I've run into, like, like the expansion explosion decks and whatnot, and, I mean, it's still decent. It's just, why do that when you can take every turn? Right? Yeah, like, that, it, that is true. That was mostly it. It was just, like, why, why, I mean, this is cool, like, killing the opponent immediately, I guess, with all this mana, or getting close to it, but, or I could just get this efficient combo that just makes ensures that I can just win right away. You also mentioned Field of the Dead. Yeah. I think that's also an interesting case, so... Personally, I feel like I don't run into Field of the Dead decks very much. I ran into uh, into Nexus decks and Gruel decks way, way, way more often than Field of the Dead decks. However, with Nexus and Gruel being banned, is that just going to rise to the top and become like a dominant force that everyone's playing? I think there is a bit of concern there for me that maybe with this big shakeup, uh, honestly, I didn't feel like Field of the Dead was too good in the Nexus Gruel meta, but I do have some concern that it might be too good in our future meta because it definitely is a really powerful payoff that is really easy for decks with like Golos and so forth to set up. Yeah, I mean, you already have all, like the pieces here, right? You have Golos, then you can just go into like your payoff of now Ugin and and Ulamog, and just why not make a ton of zombies along the way? So then you hit people from multiple angles, and then it just makes yeah. like I mean, I get it. You want a deck that like kind of like beats up on like I guess the mid range and control decks, right? Like some kind of Tron deck. But like, do you need to make the zombies along the way? You already have efficient enough ramp where Ulamog and Ugin and all those cards kind of punish those decks, right? So why make a bajillion zombies along the way? Uh, and just like, you know, like, I, I don't think that you need to give them that good of a, a win con. Yeah, no, I would be fine with both of those cards being banned. Although at the same time, I'm also fine with making these two changes now. Like, I'm still really hyped for where Historic's at right now oh, yeah. and exploring the new format with these banning. So I would be fine with them both being banned. But I'm also fine with that, like, coming at a future band update. But I think you are right that those are two cards that would be very high on my watch list for needing to be banned or suspended in the future. So as you're like crafting your jumpstart decks or whatever, keep that in mind that those cards are definitely, I would think at risk for a future banning. Anyway, let, we got other formats to talk about. That's historic. Let's talk about the BNR update, the format <laughs> that has definitely uh, caused the most complaints today, which is Pioneer. So heading into today's BNR, pretty much everyone that I saw that was like uh, content creators that were making predictions and doing videos, everyone had kind of decided that Inverter was definitely going to get banned for sure. At least one piece from Inverter, at least like Dig Through Time, maybe Inverter, maybe Thassa's Oracle. Uh, people were also saying they hope something from the Lotus Breach deck maybe would go along with it to hit two of the top decks and the top combo decks in the format. We finally get to be at R today, and it is Oath of Nyssa Unbanned, which is not something that was on anyone's radar, no bannings at all, and people are losing it about Pioneer. So 
what do you guys make of this? What does this mean for Pioneer that Inverter and Heliod and Lotus Breach are still around? And now, presumably, Oath of Nyssa, from what people are saying, like, yes, they unbanned it to work with Nykthos and Mono Green Devotion, but it was also a key part of the Kethys combo deck before Oath of Nyssa got banned. So if anything, they might have accidentally released another another combo deck into the top tiers of the meta. So what, what do you guys think about Pioneer? I, I love another Pioneer, slap right? from Crim. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like so many slaps to the slaps face. in the face it? all around. I cannot where, believe where Wizards is trolling from? us like this. Like, you know this, this reminds me like, of? Oh, oh, you guys what? don't play StarCraft. So back in the day, uh, StarCraft 2 was released. And, you know, p- there's three races in StarCraft. And the, the key is to balance them. People would always complain that their race was underpowered. And every patch note, they would release like a change to how you build bunkers. And it was like totally irrelevant. <laughs> like we changed the bunker build time down by five seconds. We increased it by three seconds. Everyone's like, what are you guys like? Who cares about bunkers? <laughs> right? Like deal with all this other stuff. Like this is what, like who cares about Oath of Nyssa? Like well, this is like even worse than doing nothing, right? Like why are they bothering with Oath of Nyssa? Like hit the combo decks. <laughs> Forget Oath of Nyssa. And the, the worrying thing is, uh, let me find the quote one second here. Uh, they try to explain. Uh, so start quote, we are otherwise generally happy with the shape of the metagame in Pioneer with the most oh, played man. decks, each having strengths and weaknesses against each other, end quote. <laughs> like, that's what they're saying. They're like, it's it's fine, right? Because like Inverter is a totally different combo than Breach. So that's at least two decks, right? So that that shot, that, that was like a shot through my soul. <laughs> like, oh, like just reading that, I was like, r- r- what? <laughs> like I gotta go There's, back and edit like the website, scrub our podcast where we declared Pioneer <laughs> the next format. Turns out Pioneer is, is the next frontier. All the haters were right. <laughs> this is where we're at. Like the format is just dead, right? Like it, it's not firing oh. at Moto. The challenges are not going off. Uh, it takes forever to get a match, and then this is their answer to it. Like it seems like yeah. grossly mismanaged. Yeah, like, I mean, why would you make this format and just let it go, right? Like, I mean, it's like, na- yeah, now it might not even live long enough to see it arrive on Arena. <laughs> like, like the, the the thing here is, I just can't believe that. Like, instead of putting out their fires, they started another one, right? Like, like they're like, here, let's just throw this in. Maybe another combo will take out the other combos. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that, what? That is a problem. <laughs> not, a, not enough combos in Pioneers. <laughs> We want this what to be complaining about. with all the slaps in the face and the combos going on. I think Magic's trying to become a fighting game, right? Like because the thing here, because I'm like, what is going on right now, dude? Hold on, I like, I genuinely enjoy Pioneer, right? Like, and I want to see the format thrive because the initial heart of the format and the way it started. If you ignore the combos, I I thought it was great. The sets, the rule, like you know, the sets that are available to us, and and like. Now, like, there's just, what is this, just Combo City, and, like, if you're, if you're trying to play a fair deck, like, like, it's all, it it kind of feels like casting a Delver, right? Just, like, playing a Delver deck in Modern, right? And, and, (laughs) and, and, like, that's why I just, I can't believe that instead of banning and taking out pieces of Lotus Breach, which was kind of straightforward, right? The whole community, as you had mentioned, had already accepted it, because they knew that it needed to go for the format to thrive. Now... What are they? What do they want Pioneer to be? If this if this looks healthy to them, I am curious. What do they want Pioneer to be? Like what? (laughs) Like I don't know. Yeah, there's there's a huge disconnect because from what Wizard said, they think Pioneer's in a good spot. Like as far as the as far as the (laughs) metagame in general, and if you talk to anyone who plays Pioneer. No, it seems like almost no uh, no one as far as players actually feels that way. So I'm not sure why Wizards is viewing Pioneer so much differently than everyone else. Uh, I think that by far is the worst part of the BNR update. Like Othanissa, whatever, unban. I don't I, I don't especially care. It's probably fine. <laughs> but not hitting the combo decks is. It's just like gross mismanagement of the Pioneer format. I had already kind of like not really played much Pioneer since Theros Beyond Death because of the combo decks, and 
I was convinced that this was Wizards finally fixing that and maybe making the format playable again, and they just completely ignored it, and not only ignored it, it wasn't like, oh, we're keeping an eye on these combo decks. Like, yeah, we we hear you. We're keeping an eye on Inverter and Lotus Breach. It was like, no, you all are wrong. Like, <laughs> I know you're telling us you hate the format, and it's in a horrible place, but you're wrong. We think the metagame is actually great right now, so suck it up and deal with it. I think Pioneer's dead. Like, people asked me this uh, a week ago, and I said, no, I don't think it's dead. It's going through a rough spot. Wizards will fix it. And after this BNR, I'm sort of wondering if Wizards, like, is trying to push Historic, which got a really solid BNR, and is actually, I don't know, do they want Historic to just replace Pioneer? Is that where we're heading? Like, Pioneer's not an arena, Historic is. Even if they put these old sets in arena, it's going to take several years, presumably, to have enough sets to have Pioneer. Is Wizards just, like... I don't know. Is it malice or is it just incompetence that's driving like the Pioneer VNR update? I think you hit the I, nail on the head there. Like Historic falls under the Magic Arena team, which is apparently very well funded and staffed or whatever. And Pioneer falls under Magic Online with an intern looking at it, right? Like <laughs> it, it, it was it was strange because Pioneer was so good, right? It was like the darling yeah. format. And then people like Historic. What the heck's this? Right? It is dumb, right? But I guess they gotta do it. And now several months later, it's totally flipped, right? Historic's getting all the jumpstart cards, it's getting all the love, they're looking at it. Pioneer is just left in the corner to die, right? Like I I don't <laughs> I don't know why, other than the fact that Pioneer is magic online only. Historic is the future <laughs> in uh in arena, right? So there is no but paper magic sad. happening due to pandemic. So the only data you have is Magic Online. No one's playing any games on Magic Online. So what data are you looking at? I'm like super confused as to like how they draw these conclusions. Honestly, they could have just listed that Oath of Nyssa is still banned. And I that would have been better than just unbanning Oath of Nyssa like at this point. Because yeah, like I just don't understand like how how could like I don't know. I mean, are they not paying attention? Are they that out of touch when it comes to Pioneer? Like, oh man, like that that that. It's still like it, I I I want to believe in it, right? I want to believe that it'll still live. And all you have to do is simply just axe these cards and axe the combos. And, like, and who's going to lament like, oh, Underworld Breach, darn, it's gone, right? Like, oh, Demure yeah. Murder, the only reason I played. Pi- like, who's going to complain about that? That's why I don't understand. It's so easy just to kill those two combo decks and see what the format is like. Even if it's just another crop of degenerate combo decks, at least it gives players hope. And something to do, right? But now it's just like, well, I know exactly what's going to happen, so I'm not going to play. I don't even think, like, like after you ban those combos, like, I think Pioneer just goes right back to, like, being mid-range fest. Which I think most people would like, yeah, actually. Yeah, I would love that. I, I think that Pioneer's especially egregious, in my opinion, because of how they handled the early bans of the format, where... Anything that was kind of combo-y got the ban uh, hammer really quickly, like copycat combo, uh, the like green devotion decks with Leyline of Abundance. Wizards was really aggressive in banning anything that kind of looked like a combo to make sure the format stayed in this like fair kind of mid-rangey turn four, turn five place. Uh, so that's just adds a whole nother layer for me at least of confusion on top of this. Like I feel like if you're gonna let Inverter and Lotus Breach, and to a lesser extent, the Heliod combo in the format, like, then unban Copycat, and unban, like, Leyline of Abundance, and just, you yeah. know, where's the logic <laughs> to this? Let them fight it out. Let all these combo decks fight it out, and we'll see what, you know, you know what's left of the format at the end, but, yeah, I, ah, uh, I, uh, I was shocked. I was literally shocked when I saw Oath of Nissa unban, which, as you mentioned, it is really, like, to some extent, a slap in the face, because Wizards knew everyone was expecting these combo decks to be banned. Like, I would rather have had no changes than unban Oath of Nissa. Like, that yeah, just, exactly. Oh, it, it, it means someone <laughs> wasted their time <laughs> testing an oath of an oath of Nissa unban, right? Like someone had to spend the time to do that, as opposed to evaluating breach and inverter. What they really need is the "Did you have fun after this game pop up?" That's what Magic Online is missing. <laughs> Smiley face. And every time face. you get inverter comboed, you can say frowny face, and, and then the intern can be like, "Ah, this deck is not good. We should ban it." That's what they need. They need more data. Smiley face or frowny face. <laughs> Do you think that plays into the arena bannings? I hadn't actually considered that. Do you think the number of people frowny facing Nexus is what, <laughs> what got it out of the format? I, I'm pretty sure, right? Like, your goal is to be like the only reason to have a balanced format is so that people keep coming back and playing, right? Which means fun. 
right? So if for some reason you had a really degenerate format where everyone was having fun, they would they would let it go, right? But yeah, I, I actually do think that smiley face is, is a thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> like land destruction, <laughs> frowny face, <laughs> right? <laughs> Combo deck, frowny oh face. Mana screw, <laughs> frowny face, right? I think, I think it actually does control stuff. Oh, it, I don't know if I like the idea of my formats being <laughs> managed by frowny face votes. Yeah, 20, 2022, <laughs> like, ban and restricted update. <laughs> Only managed by frowny faces. It's just all I, machine I, learning. I want that. I want that in the breakdown, too. Like, it seems that 72% of games with Nexus ended in a frowny face, so we decided. <laughs> I want that uh, written out. <laughs> I just yeah. I just want to read that so I know. Uh. All right, let's uh let's move on to modern. Uh, modern, I think the news in general I, is pretty good. Arkham's Astrolab is banned. That was a card that I kind of like Inverter and Pioneer. Everyone saw it coming, except it actually happened. Rather than like <laughs> Inverter and Pioneer, I think if there's any disappointment for me in modern, it's that I was kind of hoping that they would go Astrolabe plus also like Mystical Sanctuary or Mystic Sanctuary or Uro. Or oh, I was something gonna say like not Uro. That. Uh, yeah, I was I was hoping for Astrolabe plus something else rather than just Astrolabe, but twins unbanning. I don't want uh. <laughs> to complain too much because uh, Astrolabe out of the format is a is a big win, and that does improve the format even without other changes, in my opinion. <laughs> ah, another card from Modern Horizons take it bites the dust again. <laughs> no, like I mean I. I, I'm not surprised by it either. I'm glad that, you know, this wasn't like a, like the pioneer fix. So, like, I'm glad, like, Astrolabe's gone, but Uro not being banned and just, you know, like, is, is kind of surprising to me. Uh, I mean, I, I will always ask for Veil of Summer, but you know what? That's fine. I get it. All right. Sure. Sure. Maybe, may, maybe modern is where Veil of Summer can exist. <laughs> but, but the thing is, like, yeah, like, just, just Astrolabe was, acceptable but i i mean i thought maybe twin would have gotten unbanned i think i, I thought fine. this was been the this would have been the bnr announcement right this would have been the one because like why not i'm actually genuinely curious it, it, i think we're gonna try to do a a goat magic in the near future exploring what twin would look like in 2020 my initial reaction was uh twin just unban it it'll be fine and then after actually like kind of brewing with it a little bit and putting pieces together and really realizing like oh to fairy time ravelers in the yeah. format and that's just really good at twin. protecting combos like maybe twin actually really would be really good in modern i i don't know after without having built a deck i just assumed it would be fine because modern's so degenerate but then after seeing the pieces and like oh mystic sanctuary i guess what you can play that and keep getting back your cryptics in your twin deck now i'm actually like wait, kind wait, of wait, wondering you, you if i actually cryptic <laughs> oh yeah why wouldn't why not because there's, there's a one mana cryptic in green <laughs> you got the fairy you're good oh <laughs> uh, you, you sure hope so yeah <laughs> But yeah, so uh, so I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to test the matchup uh, and see what Twin is actually like. Because my initial thought was, oh, it'll be fine. But now I'm like wavering a little bit and wondering, like, if it actually would be really busted. I, I think people just want to change to modern, like, and they think the answer is Twin or Pod. Pod is the other thing that uh, keeps popping up. I don't know if they're the answer, but it does change modern. Like as of right now, there is no format that I can play mid range in. Like literally, right? Like standard. You play nope. standard. Nope, can't play mid range and standard unless you, you mean mid range ramp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So if you're casting, if you're casting Ugin, I don't know if you count as mid range. Yeah, yeah. combo. <laughs> <laughs> so people, I think people just want a, a shake up, right? Because kind of all of the formats look kind of the same right now, which is I think the biggest knock against Pioneer right now, like. Even if it's balanced, if it's all combos, it just looks like modern. Like, what is the point of it, right? It needs to look different. And right now, modern is actually like 50% Uro. So Astrolabe getting hit will bring that number down. Whether we just see like less greedy Uro decks or or what, I don't know. Uh, but we're going to find out. But people keep asking for Twin and Pod just to shake things up, right? Uh, I don't know if it would make the format better or worse, but... It will be different. I guess Goblins shook up the format a bit. It's now a, a top tier deck. Uh, but I, I think Astrolabe is a start, but I hope they're not done with it. I hope they keep looking at it because I really have 
no desire to play modern uh, until we could actually play with like fair decks and and get people with four CMC cards. Like I, I just don't <laughs> want to play this, this format. I I definitely think that like yeah I mean I I'd, I'd love to see some of these cards unbanned just at least maybe even temporarily just so I could see my, for myself right like I can like I mean yeah like that that was the one thing that I came to the conclusion with like is like yeah maybe maybe twin is still good but I'd like to see it right just because I don't know twin and like Teferi yeah that's very good but you know like I don't know it's just it'd be nice to see something like it that isn't 2019 dominant like like for Magic. Yeah, I I mean I would be fine with uh, exploring Twin and Pod with the the knowledge that maybe they do have to be banned again. We'd have to see. I think one thing I've been wondering about with this Pioneer and this Modern announcement is how much of uh, how much of it do you think is the fact that we don't really have Pioneer and Modern events right now? Like because of the pandemic, there's no Magic Fest, there's no players tours. Mostly traditionally with like modern, even going back to like twin being banned. That was like, oh, there's a pro tour coming up. We got to shake up the format. We want so that people are interested in watching. Do you think the fact that we don't have these tournaments or in Wizards doesn't really have any motivation to balance these formats outside of Magic Online, which they don't seem to care that much about in a world of arena or they care less about compared to arena? Do you think that plays into it? Like if we were having paper tournaments now, do you think this being our announcement would be different. Definitely. I, I, I think it shifts the priority in the formats of what needs to, and like what needs fixing, right? Because notice that the one that got the biggest changes were the ones that had like a historic open coming up, mm-hmm. right? Like, and like all these players tours, like that we don't have anything for pioneer or modern. So, you know what? Like not saying that they don't care about the format entirely. Uh, but like, I, I don't think that it's high up on their priority list right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think uh that is kind of what I was thinking, too, that if we did have big events, that maybe things would look a little bit different and that would uh push Wizards to, I don't know, like do more testing of what needs to be banned or just focus more on those formats. So I think for me, that's a bit of a long term concern, though, because there's not really any signs of big paper events. We know they're not happening the rest of this year. And Wizards made it sound like it would kind of be a surprise if we were back to Magic Fest at any point next year. So we're looking at, what, 18 months minimum of, like, not really having real support for these formats? Can uh, What are the formats going to do? Like, if Wizards just doesn't really focus on them or managing them during that time, are we is Modern and Pioneer going to survive that period of time without actually being managed at all? No, like, I think these formats are quote-unquote dead when there was no arena support for it, right? Like, every sport or eSport has made contingencies to continue uh, going on during the pandemic. And Wizards' contingency is just arena tournaments, right? There is no contingency for moving, say, Modern or Pioneer onto Magic Online or, you know, I, I guess do a Bubble City or something, right? Like, they don't have any of these plans. Their plan is just go full forward with arena, historic, and standard are the formats. So all these other formats are kind of left in legacy limbo, right? Like not technically dead. No one is killing them, right? But there is no support. So they get no visibility. New players don't gravitate towards the format. Uh, look, there's no one playing it. So we're not going to spend as much time on the BNR for these things. And they kind of just slowly dwindle off and become legacy. And then, I mean, how long until we say, you know, we write an article that modern is dead, right? And then all the modern diehards come in like, modern is not dead. I played modern yesterday, right? Like the same thing that happens with legacy, right? And vintage before that, like it's, it's, it's just the cycle, right? So I think historic, uh, and standard and limited are the three formats that Wizards cares about. And pandemic is just accelerating the demise of pioneer and, and modern. That is so scary considering <laughs> the state standard is vetted for the past year. For the past year. They wanted so- <laughs> players to have fast combo decks and ramp in standard because they can't play modern anymore, Seth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they were Galaxy to Braid. A little, <laughs> they got there. A little more. Yeah. The, the, it has felt a little bit modern. As Speaking of standard, we didn't get any bannings for standard, but, <laughs> but they did touch uh, up on it. <laughs> they, they did touch on it a little bit and they kind of said, hey, we know Gross Spyro is really good, but there's a diversity of Gross Spiral decks that you can play. You can choose any any number of Gross Spiral decks. So the metagame is actually, uh, you know, relatively healthy. So, so uh, no changes in standard. It sounds like based on that, that they're not playing. Planning on making changes before rotation, so 
grow spiral away for the rest of the summer, I guess. Uh, <laughs> no more ramp, please. <laughs> I don't know how they get like they they aren't gonna like ban the ramp some ramp stuff like growth spiral. Like just I mean I guess it does look a little funny that everything on the like ban list is simic, but like <laughs> <laughs> like it's all green, right? Like wow, once upon a time, Oko, all of this, like oh man. <sighs> I, I'm a little afraid of what's going to happen in Zendikar, honestly, because there's already been some, like, rumors and leaks about Landfall returning, which uh, doesn't even seem like a stretch, because that always happens when we go to Zendikar, and Uh-oh. I could definitely see, like, <laughs> gross spiral-type cards being, like, if you were designing a Landfall set, what do you want, you know, as support cards? Like, cards that put lands into play at instant speed, like, that's how you do tricks with Landfall, so I, I'm very afraid they're going to, like, reprint gross spiral or something, or something equally... <laughs> It, equally good to make landfall work in Zendikar. We're going to be stuck with it for another year and a half or two years. What if it's just Explore? <laughs> <laughs> At least Explore is a little fair. I don't know <laughs> if it's actually... I don't know if it's fair uh, a- anymore, uh, but uh, that would be better than Grove Spiral, but probably still too good. So, so there's no yeah. way any of the upcoming standards will be balanced on purpose. Right? If you think about it, they made... <laughs> they made... <laughs> the set like a year and a half ago, two years ago, right? In their minds, we're in a world with like once upon a time, Oko's, whatever, right? Like that is the format that that the playtest team was testing in, right? So now that like half the like, half the cards are banned, like how can any of these cards work with anything, right? Like there's they were just testing in a totally different environment. So if it happens to be balanced, it's by luck, right? So I, I have no faith that this format will work because like, I don't know what's more egregious, the fact that they thought all those cards were okay, like, together, <laughs> right? Exactly. Or, you know, and then, and then they're adding, like, oh, you know, if Oko's seeing play, like, this 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 new Zendikar card won't see play, so it has to be better than Oko or whatever, right? You're going to have this weird dynamic going on, so I, I am not sure, but there's no way any of them could have done their jobs correctly because the, the landscape is so different now. Uh, compared to when they were actually testing and designing the cards. Like, there's no way it can match up. How do you get out of that loop? Because that's something that someone brought up in response to a a video I made about rotation the other day, is that Wizards was testing for a format that looks a lot different, because there were companions, there was Oko, there was all these cards that are banned. But my, my concern was, like, how do you ever get out of that? Because, like, next spring, when the spring set is coming out, Presumably, Wizards had to... So they had to print Busted Cards and Zendikar to keep up with Companions and Okos and the Busted Cards from the previous sets. But that doesn't that mean, like, a couple of sets in the future? That set's being designed to keep up with the Busted Zendikar cards? And then, like, next fall set is being designed to keep up with the Busted Cards from the Spring set? Like, how do you get out of that loop? Isn't that just Power Creep spiraling out of control? Like, how do you end that? Do you just, like, okay, we're going to make a few really bad sets in a row to reset Standard? That's never going to happen, because those sets will sell don't say, no one don't, play don't say never don't say never so like <laughs> how how do you what do you do about that are we just stuck in this loop where easy uh, we spiral out of control until everyone stops playing magic or something no it's an easy fix it's return to ixalan five sets in a row and problem solved <laughs> like there, there, there we go <laughs> returning to ixalan ixalan's return <laughs> Ixalan saved rising by the, <laughs> saved by the dinosaurs yep. <laughs> colossal dread Ma gets its spark and we finally see <laughs> or or carnage tyrant oh carnage yeah tyrant there you go. <laughs> i'm done this is the, <laughs> spike my computer out the window <laughs> like like I, I i do agree though right like that is true like how do you get out of this like loop but i have to have faith that i think zendikar right i mean I, i've just got it right i mean if if core 21 like i like the power level of core 21 so i i think if it's anything like that, then, you know, I, I'm just gonna hope that whatever, but even if landfall comes back, it isn't ridiculous, right? Like it isn't, I don't know. I, I, I like if, if the worst thing that happens from landfall is like play to GOP, then okay, sure. Right. Like that, that's that, that yeah. like that's great. I, I honestly think that, you know, maybe, maybe the set will just have landfall, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be ridiculously broken. So I, I think I'm more of just going with the optimistic outlook here and think that the next couple of sets will be better, right? And they will match around Core 21. Like, I don't think you need <sighs> yeah. power creep. 
to enjoy magic, right? I, I don't know why everyone associates power creep. Like it has to have power creep. Like every limited format you play is not necessarily stronger than the previous limited format, right? Like we, we still keep playing limited every single time a, a set comes out. So like you don't necessarily need your creatures to do like eight things when they enter the battlefield to be interesting, right? Like you could just go back to like, you know, Mega Morph or something like some weird mechanic that I, I like that. By the way, <laughs> where, where you play magic, but you play like I don't know, fair magic or putting a plus one plus one counter or something is like worth it, right? And like battle it out, right? Like what happened to top decking and like running out of cards and like stuff like that? Like that doesn't happen anymore, right? Like most cards or most games end with you with like a fistful of cards in hand because you died because you couldn't like cast anything before you died. Like, maybe go back to the old school where, yes, it's literally a 3-4 that's attacking you and going to kill you, and you have no cards in your hand, and you have to top deck something, right? But, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't think you actually need power creep. Like, I'm I'm fine. I play limited all the time after playing, like, Pioneer, after playing Standard, right? Like, format is definitely a lot weaker, but I have probably more fun playing limited because it's actually balance maybe not core 21 but the previous set was like really good right so so i don't know i will say that core set 2021's power level was encouraging to me i feel like that was at a pretty good spot i'm a little worried about zendikar just because last time we returned to zendikar it was not super well received and i feel like wizards maybe that would be a motivation to like make sure Zendikar hits this time and really, <laughs> like, go hard at Zendikars because I don't think that having two Zendikar flops in a row would be, like, an acceptable outcome from Wizards' perspective. So that does make me a little bit nervous, uh, but I'm still holding out hope. Like, uh, I did an article about Standard in the future, and I feel like just from the rotating cards, we're heading in the right direction and things should improve. Uh, it's really just a question of what is Wizards print in Zendikar, and we're going to have to wait and see, but I'm holding out hope that we'll see uh, an improved standard come fall. Yeah. I mean, wait, so, like, the last time we were we were in Zendikar, was the issue that the power level was too low? Um, so the power level was... Nothing it, was played outside of Gideon, it, right? Well, the lands yeah. and Gideon, right? Yeah. So, so like... The power level wasn't very low. The Eldrazi theme was also not very well received. It didn't, a lot of people didn't feel like it was Zendikari and it was more of an Eldrazi set than a Zendikar set. So there were complaints on multiple fronts, I think, about the return to Zendikar. I think, I, I think, I remember like Devoid was cool, but like it just kind of missed the mark. Like, you know, like I, I liked it. It, like some things were cool. Like, the, I, the, the fact that they had, it, it was a bit too confusing though. You know what I mean? Like, wait, so this red blue <laughs> spell is not a blue or red spell so i can't <laughs> mystical dispute this right <laughs> so but i mean what do you think that that entails then like are we gonna get like some ridiculous i i don't know like zendikar is was that ever really that cool of a plane i mean i always felt like it was just okay like it was like eh. i like fetch I lands like, <laughs> i feel like fetch lands were what yeah. made people like it primarily although i do think like People really liked allies the first go around, the kind of a sliver style tribe where they all benefit each other. And then, like, you didn't even know what an ally was for the most part in Battle for Zendikar. I remember, like, that was in the early days of the podcast. And I don't remember, I don't know if you remember this, Richard, but I swear we did, like, a is it an ally guessing game one episode <laughs> where we'd, like, read the card and we'd, cause you couldn't tell there was nothing that made it look like an ally. It would just, like, have it tacked on at the end of the text box after, like, three other creature types or something. So. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know if Zendikar is actually, like, as good as people think it is, or if uh, Fetchlands just kind of yeah. make people overrate the original Zendikar set. But I do know that people didn't really like Battle for Zendikar. And I think Wizards, I think Mark Rosewater, when he does his yearly recap, also, like, kind of admitted that Zendik the return to Zendikar, Battle for Zendikar, didn't really go the way they were hoping it would. So, we'll see. Yeah. Because I, I, that's what I, I – I genuinely think that it's just the fetch lands that people remember, right, from the original Zendikar. Other than that, I don't remember liking much of anything else, really. I'm pretty sure everyone just looks back and has fond memories, <laughs> right? Like, because magic has just been uh, in an interesting spot for a couple of years. Like, they're like, ah, uh, yes, Homelands, the greatest set of all time. Like, no, actually, no one bought Homelands or it was a big flop or Kamigawa – you all look back fondly, but Wizards has stated time and time again. It was like the worst selling thing ever. Like, I feel people just look back 
on nostalgic things and they're like yes that that was a good time because now they're like oh no i'm getting like oko and ugin and like they're just not happy so i i don't know how much weight to put back into fond memories of older sets when wizards has sales data right they know if the sets did well or not at that time um well we should get to fish mail in a second but before we do i gotta mention because if we don't uh we'll get yelled at in the comments by our dozens of popper fans uh popper had some uh, some bad eggs too. Expedition map and Mystical Sanctuary. I haven't played much Popper recently, which is partly why we haven't talked about it more. I know from talking to Popper people, Mystic Sanctuary was high up on people's list of cards they wanted banned. Expedition map, kind of a bit of a dark horse. That was not a card that people were talking about. I think if there's disappointment from Popper players, it's that Ephemerate and Ghostly Flicker were two of the cards uh, at least on par with Mystic Sanctuary and maybe even above Mystic Sanctuary in terms of what they were hoping for would get banned. So I don't know. Do any of you have a uh, Popper BNR thoughts? I never even played Popper, so... No clue there. Yeah, maybe I should play. I'm trying to find a format to play, and I've like settled on Legacy somehow. <laughs> but maybe Popper is what because I've thrown out basically Pioneer Modern at this point. So maybe I could try Popper. I mean, I mean, if you like fair grindy magic, then uh, then Popper is a place for you. Every game's gonna take you <laughs> an hour to complete. <laughs> You're gonna go through like 75 percent of your deck, one for winning people into oblivion until someone has a card left in hand and wins with it. So. I mean, Mystic Sanctuary is banned. I hate that card so much. It's like the dumbest <laughs> card ever made. So maybe I'll try Popper. Yeah, give it a shot. I know that's what a lot of pros did in like protest during the Companion era when pros were like really bad. A bunch of like Paul Rietzels and LSV type people started like playing Popper because that was the one format where there were no companions and it was true magic. So <laughs> True magic. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, let's answer some fish mail before we wrap things up today. Richard, take it away. All right, if you have questions, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail, and we'll get to your questions on air. First question, JC Garm. I think because ramp isn't good enough in standard, we need mox reprints. Which one of the <laughs> following adjustments would make them fair enough? <laughs> one, when mox enters a battlefield, each opponent draws a card. Two, Mox legendary rule, one in play at all times, uh, three costs one mana. These all seem <laughs> absurdly broken still. <laughs> uh, at the way like standard and all that is feeling and whatnot, we why not just leave it as is? <laughs> why, or like, why, uh, why not leave it Krim, as is? Krim, Krim has lost his mind. He's, he's <laughs> like, like, I just want to <laughs> see the world burn. Uh, uh, mox, <laughs> mox, mox, Uro. Hey, Demir can have ramp now, right? Like, that's fine. <laughs> it, may, it maybe keeps up with Uro. <laughs> I, I think so, this current iteration, you would play them all in modern, right? Even Oh, th they would all see play, yeah. I think, across four. I think they're all, all of those would still be too strong yeah. when you consider what the other options were. Out of those options, if I had to choose one, I think paying one mana is the biggest drawback of those because at least you can't do, like, the vintage, like, oh, turn one, I don't know, land, mox, 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 planeswalker, or whatever. Like, you wouldn't be able to do that. So I think that might be the, the most stringent, but I think... I mean, we don't even have two mana mana rocks in standard or even in pioneer that we don't have. And you got to go back to modern for like signets to have two mana tapped out of mana cards. So I think that, uh, I think that those are just way too pushed. What if it's like ETB tapped ancient tomb? So it's zero. It enters tapped. But when you tap it, you lose two life. That's probably still too strong, right? Because you just combo off what? on turn two. Honestly, I think if you put all those restrictions together, it still might be, it still might be too strong. Your opponent draws a card, it costs a mana, and you can only have one. That still might be too good. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. Next question. Q dig is five owing a best of three event on Magic Arena the same as five owing a league on Magic Online? Mm, I think you play events more than I do, Krim. I know. I play so I play leagues on Magic Online, but I very rarely play anything but the latter on arena uh you play leagues on both though what's your impression how comparable are those two uh i think that they're like like leagues people will value the latter a lot higher when it comes to arena so that's where you're gonna see more of the spiky decks um i like having something like uh, events because that allows me to just pretty much see, like you get to see more decks right like more things uh so i i like it but it, i don't think that it's the same 
as the uh, as the moto leagues because the moto leagues to me feel more like the latter. Are, yeah, are you paired against the same record in the best of three? Yeah, event? You I, I think you are. I mean, like I definitely noticed that the better you're doing in like an event on arena, you'll play again. You'll start getting closer to what looks like the latter. So uh, this doesn't make any I, I, sense, though. If people are playing Jank, can't you just farm best of three events? I used to farm best of three events like way back, like when the thing started. But if people are playing such, you know, like non tier decks, can't you just play like the best of three events and just farm gold and gems? Not I think necessarily. It's it, it's it's not like they they show up with like, I don't know, the the starter deck right like not always i mean maybe may, there may be a chance where you run into somebody playing the starter deck but like the thing is it's very unlikely that you'll see that i think my impression has been that on magic online the best players play leagues that's like the most competitive event that's up all the time when if you see arena and just like watch the streamers or the pros almost all those people are playing ladder and very rarely actually playing league so i think there is a, a kind of uh, a split in how players, the top players actually play the format, because that's been my impression too, uh, when a couple of people have asked me on stream, like, oh, why don't you play an event instead of the ladder? And my impression has always been that the ladder is actually more competitive than events on Arena, which is weird because it's the exact opposite on Magic Online, where if you just play random one-off games, it's way less competitive than playing a league. So, I don't know. I don't know why that exists, but I'm pretty sure that that, uh, that difference is there. I think it's the the MMO theory. Like, if you are mythic on ladder in arena, that means you played like a billion hours this month. So, like, you must be good, right? Just like when you're like end game in an MMO, like you've just played so many sheer hours, you can trust that that person knows what they're doing. Whereas Ooh. best of three event, maybe they played like once in the last like month, or maybe they've played you know every single day. Like, there's no way of knowing. But if you're like mythic, like clearly you played like a crap ton this month. That's a that's a super good uh, point. That on arena the rankings are tied to the ladder. That's how you get to mythic on Magic Online. Whatever version of rankings we have is basically trophies from league. So if you want to yeah. get on the Magic Online leaderboard, the way you do that is by five owing league. So kind of the incentives are different if you want to you prove yourself more or less and have something you can point to like i'm mythic good or i'm this many trophies good you got to play leagues on moto and you pretty much play the ladder on magic uh, arena i mean before the ladder that 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 was how you would play arena though right like because yeah. the leagues that was just pretty much what you had so and i i like playing what since closed beta i guess i've gotten used to just playing events also right like i, I still think events are great so because there, there's because there's still a way where you can like generate value whereas moto has just like leagues you get trophies you do well you can get your your tickets or players points back right uh arena allows you to keep playing events through well playing events and that's just another way you can keep playing magic without having to also play the ladder while also getting gold and all the like icrs and stuff like that so i don't know i i, I like the rewards a lot more of a like a an arena event. All right. Uh, next question. Eleven vicious with the arrival of VIP boosters. Do you think magic will go the way of sports cards uh, with one of one printings of cards, artist signatures, even printing plates of certain cards in packs? And if so, how far from it do you think we are? Yes. And not that far. I, I don't know why they wouldn't go that direction. Uh, I feel like the VIP boosters that are, what, going to be $100 a piece is the best info we have are a step in that direction. I would not be at all surprised if within the next year or two, there's some, like, $2,000 booster box that you can buy where you get, like, 10 packs and you get a chance to get signed cards, one-of-one one arts that literally don't exist anyplace else in magic at all like you'll be the only person that has this art on your uro or your teferi or whatever if you open that so i i don't know why they wouldn't it works in sports cards and we've already gone that direction in magic with tons of different versions and different arts it seems like the next logical step and it doesn't seem that far away to me does it work in sports cards because i haven't seen a sports card since i was like five years old or ten years old man like they used to be everywhere but yeah. should, there are. Dead. I mean, I've seen them at Target, right? But like, yeah, no one, exactly. 
But no one buys them. No one buys them well, anymore, right? So do we really want to go down this path? You should you should look up. Yeah, I thought that too, because I remember sport cards from a kid, and I thought, oh, they just like went away. But there is a pretty active, like high-end scene. If you look up like box crackings on YouTube, there's like YouTube channels with tons of viewers that are dedicated to opening like fifteen hundred dollar boxes that have like ten packs in them. Of, uh, of or stuff made thousand dollar boxes. Of stuff, yeah, like brand wow. new 2020, but it's like pieces of jerseys, it's autographs, it's like gold in the cards. Wait, there's it's like pieces all of jerseys different... in the card? That's yeah, ridiculous. Or like bats, like they chip up bats from baseball players what? and you get a piece of the actual <laughs> player's bat. So that's where it's wet, is this like ultra high end, one of one, one of ten, <laughs> autographs, jerseys uh, type stuff. Give, give me a card with like Marl's fingernails in it. Fingernail yeah. clippings. Here we go. I own a part of magic history. <laughs> Like, I guess we have artist proofs. That's like all we have. I guess they can just do spicy, like alternate arts and stuff like that, right? But I, I think yeah, having like and parts of a bat sounds kind of cool. <laughs> we don't really have anything like that in Magic. I don't know how you would even implement that other than <laughs> Marrow's fingernails, which I don't know if anyone a- actually wants to open that card. That's a little weird, but <laughs> Mara's fingernail, LSB's toothpick. Who knows, right? Like. <laughs> Pieces of like the the super <laughs> horrible pro tour team jerseys, like Brad Nelson's jersey from like SCG Pantheon in 2013 or something. Just clip it up and <laughs> put them in the cards. <laughs> oh. oh, all right. Uh, that's all time we have for Fish Mill this week. Thank you to everybody who sent them in. If you have questions, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail. And we'll get to your questions on air. And I believe that that brings us to the end of episode 285 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. So, Richard Krim, thanks for hanging out. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks to Card Conduit for supporting the show. So, uh, we will be back next week to talk about whatever goes down in the world of magic. Until then, have a wonderful week. And this is the crew signing out. Bye.